Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. How are you doing today? I'm Susan Lynn. I'm a psychic and a medium, and I have a bipolar YouTube channel where I do videos that are very spiritually topic enhanced, and I also do videos where I do political predictions. I have a lot of very busy spirit guides that help me with the various things that I do. And you can too. All you have to do is ask. So today we're going to be talking politics. And we, you guys have been so kind as to send in your questions. I really appreciate it. You know, I've told you guys before, I don't watch much news. And I particularly don't often think of the questions that you think of. So these questions give me an opportunity to dip into the news energy very specifically, very specifically as per your questions. So I don't have to basically dive in an Olympic pool size of gunk and junk and terrible energy. I can just sort of ladle a little teaspoon in there and answer your question. So I hope this is helpful for you because it particularly works well for me as well. Let's get started. You already sent in one list of questions and I kind of came down with a cold and I may pause this video to blow my nose or something, but I'm going to get to part two of your questions and this is what we're doing right now. Alfie35 says, and this is great, and I, I'm feeling a little bullish about the energy and that means good, I think. <laughs> Maybe that means good in the stock market, I don't know, but that's what my guides are saying. They're, they're feeling... Um, Huzzah, they're feeling like, I don't know, they're feeling like, you know, the energy has taken a, a good turn. Now, I want to tell you guys, especially if you don't watch me or haven't watched me for a long time, my guides, my spirit guides are, time is nothing to them. It, it is everything to us, right? But they don't own calendars. So when I get information from them, I find that it's often months in advance. So I'm feeling like they're particularly hopeful around December and January. Now, I'm okay with that because I'm just happy for any hope, to be honest with you. You know, any light at any tunnel is good by me. I do know we're going to go through some pretty prickly, upsetting times. Yes, we are. There's no doubt that energy. So another thing to understand about energy is once it's set in motion, it's set in motion, right? I mean, certain things have now been set in motion. And we need to wait for that energy to sort of slow down. Think about a car that acts, no one puts the brakes on and they park it on a hill. Well, it starts rolling slow and then it gains steam and speed as it goes down the hill. And it depends on how long the hill is, right? As to how long that energy is going to last. And it depends also on if there's another hill that slows it down or does it, you know, make a turn and crash, I mean, the energy has to run itself out is what I'm trying to say. So some of the things that are in progress right now just have to run a little bit of their course. Yes, we can we can hedge them, we can manipulate them to a degree, but but it's big energy and I just don't see us being able to stop it on a dime. So I feel like this December time frame is kind of when the energy when the things that we are doing as humans on the planet are going to be affecting, 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 affecting the energy, it'll finally slow this energy down closer to the end of November into December. And we'll see some real, I think, fruitful, fruitful results in January. Uh, some peaceful, fruitful results. Okay, so let's get going. Aces uh, 2342 says, will Trump be jailed for defying any of the multiple gag orders? Well, you know what's interesting about your question, dear, is I've never seen Trump being jailed and neither has anybody else. I mean, none of the psychics that I've talked to or seen or whatever, we don't see it. We all see him in a rubber room. <laughs> we all see him in a, in some sort of very like Guantanamo. I've often seen him in a secure facility, no outside contact. And I mean, no, not even, I'm not even sure his kids would visit him if they had a chance to visit him. I don't even think they would, but I'm saying no contact to the outside world because that is how dangerous he is. He still has information that he can parlay into money and he's still valuable, right? If we put him in Rikers, 
somebody's going to either kidnap him or off him. And then we got a war. Then we got a war because somebody killed our our ex president. We got you know no, we're not going to go for any of that. But what's interesting about what you say is this is what's changed lately in his energy, and it's it's sort of dovetailing with something I saw. So I'm not sure. I it's it's really confusing to me. But I'm going to try to make sense of it. So listen to this. Trump has been saying his own self, "I want to go to jail. Put me in jail." He, you could say he's joking. You could say he's calling Fonnie Willis's and Jack Smith's and uh, Chutkins and, you know, he he's calling these judges bluff. You could say that, that he's saying, well, come on then. You want to put me in jail, put me in jail. Because he knows, on one hand, he knows we can't put him in jail. We can't. We cannot put, he's too high value of a person. I promise you. He would be dead in 30 minutes and Al Qaeda would take responsibility. And then the MAGAs would go crazy. And then, you know, think about it, you guys. Put your thinking caps on for a minute and see how bad that would be, right? So he's he's really bluffing. He's really trying to call their bluff and be the big guy. You know, like, I'm so bad, put me in jail, right? Okay, fine. That's that's one angle of this energy. The other angle of the energy is something that the guide said a while back, which is, at some point, Trump is going to, you know, he's either a, he's either a liability or an asset. There's no in between. I always talk about being in the motorcycle gang. You're either in the gang or you're dead. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, or you're in prison, keeping your mouth shut for the gang, right? You're you're which means you're in the gang. So Trump, if he becomes a liability to his puppet masters, if he becomes a liability to even some stuff that he told North Korea or China or Saudi Arabia or anybody, if he becomes a liability, if he says, okay, uncle, I, y'all are for real serious. Like I'm really starting to see this whole rubber room thing and no McDonald's. I'm ready to, to give you whatever you want. That means he's flipping not on somebody like cheese, bro. He's not flipping on the Kraken. He's flipping on a country and countries have assassins. So I see him going to the DOJ saying, you got to help me. You got to help me. They're trying to kill me. I swear to God, they're trying to kill me and asking to be put in jail or asking to be put in a in a safe place. So those two energies are very interesting. They're sort of the things that I saw months and months and months ago. I saw him, one of the possibilities was him going to the DOJ and saying, you got to keep me alive. You don't want this, you know? And, and the odd bedfellows of the United States saying, we got to keep this guy alive because we don't want one of our enemies to kill him and then take responsibility. Think about it. That's what they want. They want to destabilize us. He's at risk. So it's interesting that he's asking about jail. I don't see him going. I don't there. The DOJ's hands are tied is what they say. They tell me again, I would tell you they're better off. Why they gave him a $5,000 fine, $5,000. That man spends $5,000 a week on McDonald's. I mean, what kind of fine is that? We need to up that to the million dollar range and we need to just keep piling them on. That's what talks to Trump is money, 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 money. So I don't see him going to jail. If you see him detained in, in some kind of Guantanamo situation, meaning some kind of building that's protected like nothing you've ever seen, then that means his life was threatened. Alfie 35 says, Biden, Biden, this is so awesome. And unlike the Democrats, really and truly, Biden posted on True Social. So maybe you live under a rock and, you know, please give me the address because I'd like to join you. But there is a social media company that Trump founded called Truth Social. And it's so 1984, so, you know, doublespeak that he sends out truths that are really lies. It's You can't make this stuff up, to be honest with you. 
So Biden got himself an account. I mean, you think they would block the man, right? You think they would say these accounts are not allowed. But anyway, Joe Biden got himself an account on True Social, and now he has more followers on True Social than Trump does. Can you believe it? I tried to join True Social. I don't know. They blocked me. I don't, I just, it was too much hassle. I couldn't join it. I wanted to join it because I'm a glutton for punishment in some respects. And I just wanted, I wanted to see with my own eyes what he was truthing out because oftentimes people would use his template and then put different words in there. And it was just getting really confusing, right? And I just wanted to see my own eyes, what this joker was saying. Uh, but even I couldn't get an account, but hey, Joe Biden did. And he's got more followers than Trump does. Now, you know, Trump is all about the ratings. He's all about the followers. He's all about how much money he has. And so Alfie's question is, how does Trump feel about this? Well, it's it's like energetically, it's they're showing me if you took a hidebound kind of prehistoric animal, you know, like a... I don't even know some kind of they're showing me some kind of thing like it's rhinoceros slash woolly mammoth. I don't know what this thing is. Who knows if it even ever existed? It probably exists on some other planet. But anyway, and you you get it right in between. You get it in the soft spot. You missed all the armor and you got it right in the soft spot. And it hurts like hell. So and that's a little too gleeful <laughs> for my for my new and improved uh, energy that I've been working on. But, you know, hey, I'm still human. I'm still existing on planet Earth and I'm not going to become an ascended master while I'm, you know, eating French fries and chocolate. <laughs> so <laughs> they have to give me my I, I, I'm already in detention. What the hell? All right. So anyway, yeah, it got him in his soft spot. He's he's kind of stuck because because the, he wants to cancel he wants to block biden you know he wants to block biden's account but he's starting sort of to listen believe it or not i mean after you know almost being thrown in jail for gag order and everything else he never listens he's starting to listen that this he's really on the ropes he's in a dire situation he can't afford to make too many mistakes and he needs this this bully pulpit. He needs this uh, you know, megaphone. So he's gonna try to ignore it for a little bit. And and he thinks he also thinks I'm going into the energy. God bless me. Why? He also thinks that he he's like, great, great, I can handle this guy. I'm a bully. I know how to bully people. So he's actually thinking he's gonna get in there and spar with Biden. And have you seen Biden? Have y'all seen Biden? Dark, dark Brandon, have you seen him? I wouldn't suggest anyone spar with that man, honestly. Uh, he's a very kind, gentle man. But if you make him mad, you're probably going to come out looking the worst for that. So, yeah, Trump is feeling terrible about that. I'm feeling great about it personally because we need this kind of energy. We really do. We need Biden. You know, think about it like this, too. The guides are saying he crossed the aisle, right? Biden was known for being a senator that crossed the aisle and reached across the aisle and made compromise and got things done. Well, this is kind of the ultimate crossing of the aisle. I'll come to your swamp. I'll wade in. I'll see what it's like. I'll present myself and I'll take on all comers. Imagine the toxicity in that place. Imagine the toxicity. And he's like, I can do it. I'll do it. That's some that's some cojones, y'all. That y'all know what that is. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to Google it. First, you'll have to figure out how to spell it. All right, let's move on. KES4795 says all the turmoil seems calculated, meaning no speaker, potential government shutdown, Ukraine funding uh, being at risk, uh, the Middle East uh blowing up. Is this an effort to weaken Biden coming into the election? And will it hurt him? And so your first your first statement was, it seems calculated. Yes, dear. I would say, they're giving me chills. I don't know why. That's they. I, I would say that what, what they're telling me is they, they had a lot of things planned. And they were just waiting for the right time to launch it. Um, I think some of it is a, a few little things are 
happenstance, although I don't really believe in happenstance, but I don't think they were calculated to the nth degree, but it is overall, yes, calculated. And to your question, will it hurt him? And I don't think it's going to hurt him because here's what's happening right now. You have uh, train loads, truck loads, plane loads of aid, food, medicine, everything you can imagine going into Palestinian towns, flowing in from the United States, from the West, that this is Biden's humanity. This Biden has the humanity that we need in our leaders. He doesn't care. It, at the end result, he does not care if it if he gets you know beat in an election. He's going to do what's right. He's going to do what's right. And I feel like he's also been talking to Netanyahu and to the Israeli government and, and saying, hey, let's measure this. Let's come on. We can do this a little bit better. We can we can we can help you. But you have to do this a little differently. Biden will create a safe place for Israel and Israelis, and he will create a safe place for Palestine, Palestinians. And am I am I? Am I crazy? Right. I'm saying Biden's going to do this, but I'm telling you Biden's going to do this. I believe it with every fiber of my soul being. Will others help? I hope so. You bet. We need the world to get involved in this, not just the Middle East, not just the West. We need everybody to, to step up and help this situation. But I see Biden shining as a peacemaker. So I feel like give us three months. We'll, and I told you guys there's a, a real opportunity for peace there in December. Give us three months. Let's see. Everybody has free will. I think that the United States, I see Biden and the United States willing to stand with Israel to find these terrorists, to hunt them down, to hunt them down, no matter where they are, and make them pay, make them be held to account. But that's different than the Palestinian people. And that's what Biden is going to do. And that's what's going to bring peace. Let me move on. Karen Edinger says, is there an investigation going on regarding the large PPP funds wrongly taken by Trump and friends and members of Congress? Will that be made public and those bad guys held accountable? So the PPP funds were those Rather a largesse is what they want to say. These big loans that were given out and, and, re, and forgiven, honestly, forgiven <laughs> uh, to a lot of business owners. And it turns out to some some uh, politicians and, and Democrats as well. Right. I mean, this is this is what's happening right now is that justice is, doesn't have an R or a D on her shirt. You know, she doesn't. Uh, she's going to, if you've stepped out of the bounds, if you've crossed a line, if you've broken a law, you're just as likely to be held accountable regardless of what your party affiliation is. So yes, I do see this, but mostly I see this being a big uh, election tool. So what I see mostly is that this is used as a big uh, club to beat these people up with in the media. Why did you take this money? Who do you think you are? Why did you get a free $100,000? Why should you get a free $100,000 when this person who went to school is, is paying their $100,000 back with such high interest rates, they're never going to get it done? You're going to start seeing the media or some parts of the media kind of get traction and sort of real this this PPP thing is going to be the end of some political careers. Somebody has to make it a big deal. Do you guys think that the Republican states are going to make this a priority to go after their own people? No, they're not going to. That's why the Democrats will use this as a club to beat them over the head in the media. So yes, I think some will their reputations will be tarnished and they may even be, they may even lose their office, their seat. Others I do see being held accountable. In 20, what year is this? 24, you know, things move so slowly, honestly and truly. In 24, maybe even into 25, there might be a government oversight committee that is, that is created to look into this. And then that's when the pain is really going to start because they will really investigate these people. And you want to, how are you going to pay back 
a hundred thousand or even a million dollars that you got for free, right? Um, yeah, that's going to be a pain point for sure. But that to me is more 24, 25. In the meantime, the Democrats will make use of this, trust me. And and we all should too, right? We we should be in these people's socials saying, you can look it up. You can Google PPP money in my hometown. I did, and I was shocked, shocked at the money some of these small businesses got. Look in your own hometown, hold these people accountable. Hold them accountable. Go in their socials and say, hey, you got $100,000. You got $50,000 free money. Why are you against these, these kids, these people getting free money? Rub it in their face, you guys. This is what we can do. Why not? Be a little burr under their saddle. And you know what? They're just told me, and this is such good advice. I always crack myself up when I tell the spirit guides it's good advice, like, duh. But anyway, you know, I in our communities, it's a little bit like you don't really want to do that. <laughs> you don't really want to make a bunch of enemies uh, in your own little hometown that's red. So pick the your least favorite senator, your least favorite rep in another, another state. Find out the dirt on them and bird dog them. You don't have to be a constituent of them. There's to write that in there. So you're not making yourself at risk. Because you're going after Bobert or you're going after one of your favorite people. So that's one way to do this and not expose yourself to some potential anxiety and angry people in your own hometown. Okay, we're going to move on to Loretta King, who says, will there be any changes to the members of the Supreme Court between now and the end of 2024? Now, this goes back, the guides are showing me to that kind of first question where they asked, is this connected? Is this uh orchestrated, so to speak, because when I go into this energy, now I've read on this question a bunch in the last two years, and I, I've been seeing Thomas go out. I've been seeing uh, three of them go out, and so is everybody else. But now the energy feels slippery. It feels like um, justice is, on. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is the image they gave me, Justice is on a slip and slide. She can't get her grip. She's sliding, you know? Now, why, why is that? Why is justice not being able to snatch these people by their little, you know, Supreme Court justice robes? Because it's too much. Because th six months ago, three months ago, we didn't see this happening with Israel and, and Hamas. And yes, this does not only, you know, create problems for Biden. It might not hurt Biden per se, but it creates problems actually for the DOJ because we've told you guys, they have to be very careful. They can't just knock this out of the park. I, we're not an authoritarian country anyway, the guides are saying. We have a system of checks and balances. We have laws, we have courts, and we have a system of justice. And the DOJ, Jack Smith, is now kind of, he, and, and this happened actually in September and I was wondering why it happened. The timeline slowed way down. All the things I was seeing happening in October just slowed down. And, and now I feel like justice is slip sliding down the yard on the slip and slide and she just can't get a grip. And I think what that means is time. She's slipping down the timeline. I still feel like there's a first step there's a first step. And, and I've often seen, and they're not changing their mind on this, that Fonnie Willis and that Atlanta is ground zero. And I feel like now with the Kraken lady flipping on Trump and Chesbro flipping on Trump and, and you know, got to give it to Fonnie Willis, right? Like sharpen her little claws in the back back there, making these people flip like, like, you know, crickets or something, you know, like circus crickets. So these two players are going to put the smack down on Eastman and all of these other people uh, and much and even uh, Jenna Jenna whatever her name is Ellis they're going to put the smack down on these people Chesbro is is the one that could open this up Rico wise and and even nab some people like uh these people that would have real knowledge of Jan 6 and I feel like 
because Chesbro was one of the architects of this. He was in he was in the 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 nexus, the the scrum of it, the heart of it. And I feel like Fonnie Willis is going to wring him out like a dirty, nasty, stinky rag. And then she's going to be like, yeah, I don't need all this stuff you gave me, but I will pass it along to Jack Smith, which can happen apparently. So this is, again, I, I've always seen Jack Smith and Fonnie Willis sort of working in some sort of balancing or, or sharing or something like that. So why does that have anything to do with the Supreme Court? Well, because we need to, we sort of need to deal with this. This is the first step. The first step is getting these convictions, getting these indictments even for these Congress people, for the senators, and, and putting everybody on notice. You might think of it as a big pot of water that these prosecutors are, are turning up the heat on. And, and what's going to happen is as these people, these Congress people and also Trump's inner circle kind of get, you know, the heat turned up on them. You're going to see Thomas and you're going to see all these other people, Coney Barrett and, and Kavanaugh. You're going to see them start sweating. They're not even in the pot, but the heat is getting to them and you're going to see them step down. They, I truly believe they're going to leave the court I do see three people leaving the court. It could be a health thing. It could be, I want to retire and spend more time with my family. It could be anything. But I do see that. I do see that happening. And, and I think that even though the timeline has sort of moved down, justice is sliding on her ass down the slip and slide. But but she's she's tough. She'll get up at the end of that thing with, a little bit of grass burn on her robe and, and she'll get up and, and dust herself off. And then she's going to be real mad. And then she's going to come back and take care of business. Okay. But that's why I think the timeline has shifted down the road, certainly into 24. We cannot do all of this at once. If we took out the judges, took out the Congress people and the senators and Trump and his inner circle, it would certainly seem to a pretty big group of Americans that this is a coup upon the Republicans. And that that would be very, we don't need that. We don't want that. We want them to be asleep. We want them to be full of milk and honey, have good jobs, be, be really interested in their own successful lives so that when these scoundrels go down, they just kind of look and go, that's a shame that should never have happened but they never get off their four wheeler or the bass boat to go march or bring chaos into our country. That is why that's what's hanging in the balance. That's why you see all of this being orchestrated sort of to not create mass hysteria among these people who we both know, we all know are not mentally stable and are armed to the teeth. So this is what hangs in the balance. This is why they're doing things the way they're doing them. Let me do one or two more questions. Kathy says, read on Jim Jordan's health. He's looking pastier than ever. Maybe 45 second up to him isn't as fun as he had hoped. Yeah. I know several people said in the comments that Jordan doesn't, that Jordan's always been really pasty, right? Like he's always had this sort of white pasty skin. But I would, I would ask you guys, to understand that we're not looking with our eyeballs. <laughs> we're looking with our intuition. And our intuition says his skin looks different. Maybe it doesn't look different to the average eyeballs, but to those of us that are tuning into something else, he doesn't look good. He looks really, really unhealthy. And I still think there's something really down in his gut area, all the way from the bottom of his spine up into his lungs. I, I don't wish this on him. I wish him health. I wish him peace. I wish him prosperity. But most of all, I wish him to be generous of heart, right? Uh, please stop being such a douche. <laughs> That's what I would say. I'm going to move on with that. A healer within says, will Jim Jordan be indicted by Jack Smith before year's end? Um Okay, it's already the almost the end of October. 
and it's uh the end the end the end no no it feels like uh diagnosis i just got the words diagnosis he might get a diagnosis towards the end of the year and again again what does that do it it makes you feel like well how does this look you know look these people have to win biden Th these people have to win elections they don't want it to look bad and so if he gets a terrible diagnosis then they may not indict him so quickly but i but i feel like they're telling me he's going down um i see surgery in his um near future maybe up into very early spring or late winter and i i do see indictments Oh, wow. I'm not sure I see indictments. I'm not sure I see indictments for, by Jack Smith. I see indictments by Fonnie Willis. I'm telling you, Fonnie Willis is ruthless. Ruthless. Ruthless for justice, not ruthless for her own agenda. If it, 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 And it reminds me of Tish James talking to the TV cameras saying he's not, Trump is not going to intimidate me. Here's the law. I am following the law. I will not be intimidated. This is also Fonnie Willis's and frankly, Jack Smith's energy. I think the universe brought these three souls together because they needed this kind of battle ready energy. And this, and this also this completely innate a hundred percent belief in the constitution, the amendments, the democracy, the, the law, the letter of the law, these three individuals believe with all of their heart in the letter of the law of the United States of America. So one more question, Patsy, yes, says, with the situation in Israel, Ukraine, isn't it more urgent than ever that Tuberville is stopped from holding up military promotions? Yes, dear, absolutely. I would agree with you 100%. We don't even, I don't even think we have an, an ambassador. I don't even think we have an ambassador for Israel because of Tuberville. Our hands are tied. I've talked about this in other videos. Our hands are tied. There's not much we can do to go around him. We can go around him, but it takes a lot. It takes a lot more effort. And now there's so many openings that we can't go around him for every opening. It would it would take months and months to go around him for every single opening. There's nothing we can do. I told you guys they find the loopholes and they exacerbate them and they're snapping turtles. They just sit there and hold on for dear life. They don't care about democracy. They don't care about the United States of America. In my opinion, they are traitors. Um, he will get his comeuppance. Uh, he will, he will not, he will get his comeuppance. We will be able to, to fix this. Perhaps something happens around the holidays in December, you know, those last two weeks or three weeks of December. I, I would tell you there's energy working against him. I'm not going to go into it, but I would tell you that there's energy working against him. And I would say that it's sort of like this. If you're constantly pushing against energy, being, being like a fighter or being a jerk, you know, if you're constantly meeting the energy around you with this anger and this fight and this, you know, combativeness, well, what happens is the energy starts building against you. You're not knocking the energy down. You're knocking it back. And when it comes back, it's stronger. So you hit it, it goes back and it comes back and it's stronger. And you want to know what happens? The energy flattens your ass. That's what happens. So I feel like he's messing with the wrong energy. And I think energy is going to flatten him. And I'm not sure how that's going to uh, take place because I am not spirit. I'm not driving the karma bus, but I would say that it is coming for him. It might not be till spring, which is, you know, of course, too long. And all I keep telling you guys is wait, but there's a lot of good news here. It's just that some of these things are snapping turtles and, they, and they've exacerbated our loophole and there's no way there's no you know law there's no parliamentarian rule that we can use to get to them so now we're just waiting for karma to come along and I, and, and right now lady justice is sliding her ass down the down the slip and slide so she's out of commission for a minute so look we're just gonna have to be patient trust me when i say 
this stuff, these people will pay a price. Justice will be served. It will be served. This is not going to go unmatched, but it has to be done in a way that takes into account that we have big problems in the world right now. We, we need to be very careful about how we tread because of these new developments in Israel and with Hamas. We need to be a little bit more careful about how we tread, okay? And that is why you see Biden being the king of peace. He's trying to calm things down. He's counseling Israel. He's giving Palestinians food and water. He's the broker of peace. We can't always go in guns blazing and arrest all these people and have justice just do it all in one fell swoop. Sometimes we have to do it a little differently. And I think Biden is teaching us that. I think he's teaching us that we have to sort of do this in a different way. Maybe not the way that we want to, the way that's full of anger and full of disgust and full of rage. Maybe what we need to do is let cooler heads prevail and let judges and and prosecutors bring these cases up and deal with them one at a time and just have trust and faith. Have trust and faith. Everything is going to be okay. I've seen this movie. I know how it ends. And everything is going to be okay. It's a rough ride getting there. Not going to lie to you. It's a rough ride getting there. And that's why I often tell you guys, take good care of yourselves. There's no reason for you to be watching images of violence. There's no reason except for that you want to be in pain and you want to experience the pain because somebody else is experiencing pain. Now, what did that do? Did that help that person? It didn't. It didn't help anybody. It took another one of our lights off line. Do you see Biden being in so much pain that he's not celebrating, that he's not going to the beach? He went to the beach this weekend. He honors the sacrifices, the horrible atrocities that are happening, but he also takes good care of himself. So again, he's leading by example, right? All right, everybody take really good care. I'll be back. There's more questions. I'll be back. I'll throw another video together. Um, and, uh, you never know, I'm considering doing a live, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, stay tuned. If you're not subscribed, you're not going to know when I literally turn on the live button and go live. So it's a good idea to go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I understand it's free. Take really, really good care of yourselves. Okay, we'll be back soon. For entertainment purposes only.